I'm John Fraley, I'm from the University of Maryland, and it's really an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, just a quick story about Ben Schneiderman. Uh, he's not only the founder of the lab in which I work as a professor, he's also the founder of the field, the very discipline in which I work. So it really is a privilege and honor to have you as a colleague and to be here, Ben. Um, so uh, JD noted that uh, when I arrived at the University of Maryland in 2012, there wasn't a lot of opportunities for our students to work with both materials and computation, so physical materials and computation like wood, uh, textiles, or even clay. Uh, so that's really what my group's focus is. And I started a class as well to sort of explore these things. So I want to kind of start out with just two quick projects from my course, which are little three-week projects. And then we'll transition to talking more about textiles. So the first one is the Fabric Mouse touchpad. So this is very much like the touchpad that you have on your laptop, but it's built with a resistive and conductive fabrics and a conductive thread and some cardboard. So you'll see the mouse is moving as he positions his finger onto these fabric pads. Uh, another example comes from Richard Johnson, who started playing around with food. He was very interested in using food as a computational media. <laughs> this is me playing. <laughs> So the sounds would change depending on which spaghetti you were playing and which position within that spaghetti. The, the spaghetti was basi basically a little potentiometer for those who are uh, into electronics. But I want to focus largely on textiles. Uh, so really, what are electronic textiles? They don't have to be wearable, but the focus of my talk today is going to be on wearable e-textiles. Well, the definition from Wikipedia is essentially uh, e-textiles or smart fabrics are the embedded computation into textiles. Okay, including small uh, computers like microcontrollers. Uh, but it's better to show you. Um, so to me, that's incredibly exciting, uh, where they're mixing performance art with computation. Here we have electroluminescent wire, EL wire, and carefully timed on and off sequences um, that go along with the body move movement in a very uh, careful choreography. Here's another example, which some of you might be familiar with. This is from the Grammy Awards in 2013. This really isn't an e-textile specifically, because the display is actually being projected from a mounted projector. However, some people are looking at building uh, internally projected dresses, like Astra Roseway at Microsoft Research. And along, there's been sort of a line of research along this. This is an umbrella with a projector built into the bottom. So the umbrella becomes a canvas of a, of a surface. The only downside is, and this is an early prototype from 2006, you're literally carrying around a projector. <laughs> So I do want to underscore that e-textiles are really no longer the providence of, of uh, professional designers, fashion designers, or those in movies. They've really been broadened in the, the last uh, five years, particularly, through platforms like the Lilypad Arduino, which some of you might be familiar with, online sites like Instructables, which allow uh, communities of people to put up tutorials on how to do these kinds of things, and websites like SparkFun and Adafruit where you can buy and search for and learn about the different kinds of materials. Uh, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when I was doing my computer engineering degree, we literally had 3,000 page catalogs. So this, you know, this is a very significant change, and I think has led to this kind of veritable explosion of e-textile makers amongst artists, amongst hobbyists and tinkerers, and others that are outside of maybe the media arts or technology specifically. For example, these are from YouTube. Uh, people playing around with the idea of lighting up their shoes, not just for three or five year olds. Um, here's a really interesting idea. Uh, just put, it's quite simple, putting an accelerometer into a skirt and having the skirt sort of light up with movement. 
Uh, something a bit more extreme. This is also from YouTube. Is a T-shirt for Tetris. <laughs> Interestingly, he's he's self-playing, so he's actually looking in the mirror. He cleared a line right there. Okay. So, uh, but my research group um, is focused on e-textiles in part, and particularly how they can be used to support things like learning, social interactions, uh, health and wellness, introspection, a sense of playfulness. Um, and personal expression. So I kind of want to walk you through three brief examples. Um, the first is social fabric fitness. The second is body viz. And the final one is I like this shirt. OK, so why t-shirts? Well, t-shirts are a great medium um, for this kind of work because they have a large display surface. They're semi-public. Um, they're an everyday object. They can be playful. They're communicative, so they're social. And as part of that, they're about identity building. Okay? So for example, you might wear this to brand yourself as someone who's eco-conscious, or this shirt to demonstrate that you're kind of hip and you like the Cure, which is a fantastic band, or you know, your uh, political leanings. Okay. So returning back to so social fabric fitness, this project began with the idea of what if our clothes could show how fast we run? And some of you might be familiar with the quantified self movement, where you have self-tracking things like accelerometers or biometric devices. Um, those are oriented more towards the self, right? So their displays are for you, and the tracking data is for you. We wanted to kind of flip this on the side and say, well, what if we demonstrated and visualized that out in a semi-public kind of way? So that's what social fabric does. And this leads to a number of interesting questions, like how would a semi-public display change the experience of running? Would runners feel stress or additional motivation? So this is kind of Goffman's presentation of self. Um, you know, does it make one more self-conscious of, of one's actions? And could the displays be used in a kind of utility uh, a fashion to support races or in running groups? So we started, as we often do with sketches and low-fidelity prototypes, we started thinking about what are the metrics that would be important to running, specifically in group running, like time and pace. Um, we then looked at a lot of different kinds of materials, uh, prototyping with different kinds of fabrics, uh, rubber, cork board, um, and looking at size and weight and flexibility. We also made three interactive prototypes. So these are electronic prototypes that are actually functioning and tested these in the field. I want to point out uh, one thing, which is the weight. Weight is obviously important to exercise. You don't want to wear something that's really heavy. Um, so that's something that we really focused on. And your iPhone 4S is 140 grams. So we were doing pretty well with, for example, the prototype we built there. Uh, then we did a lot of pilot studies, uh, iterative design with, with different kinds of participants. Here you're seeing one prototype and the second prototype there. The e-ink display is neat because in direct sunlight, it's highly viewable. The backlit displays, the LED-based displays don't have that same affordance. And here's prototype three. In the end, we just started working with a company called AeroGear. This is a pre-production display. And that's what we use for our final shirts. And these are the four different kinds of metrics. We also had a shared visualization that helped people track their pace over time. We deployed this with 10 running groups. Maybe some of you were involved in this. In the DC area, um, <clears throat> on average, the group sizes were five. Average age was around 41. Average pace was 1014 per mile. And the average length of the runs were 3.5 miles. And we also deployed this in races. So I wanted to show you a movie about that. So here, sorry about the video, but here we have. He finished, I think, in the top five, maybe. This is another participant in a 10K run. Here you're seeing, I had a GoPro camera. You're seeing some, some questioning and inquiry. He's actually commenting, it feels like a dashboard, like a car dashboard for running. And it actually had a motivating feature. He noticed he was under pace, and he needed to quicken his pace. <laughs> and then he passed, and you can see uh, the participant's reaction there. So some quick qualitative results. It did have a motivating function, it appeared. It made me more aware of our pacing. It kept me more focused on the group. So people weren't really looking at their watches. They were looking upwards at people's shirts as they were running. It made me feel like I was pushing my efforts, which was good. Um, this is another runner. He actually got gold for the first time. He was one of our wearers. <laughs> and what's interesting about this is I myself don't share that view. I actually wore the shirt quite a bit when we were prototyping and building it, and it made me incredibly self-conscious. So there's this dichotomy here. Where I would try to go for a recreational run, and I felt like everybody was looking at me, and maybe they were. 
but also this sort of self-rationalization that we might do as someone passes you and you're like, ah, I've been running for 40 minutes, they probably just started. Well, that truth exists, that fact exists, and you can't really discount that anymore when it's being publicly displayed. Another cool part about this is the company we we're working with started integrating some of our, our designs. So you can go to aerogear.com if you want to look at that. And then quickly I'll transition to BodyViz, which is quite a different project here, but still working with e-textiles. And again, this sort of came out of uh, some, some what-if questions. What if our clothes revealed how our bodies functioned? You know, how could this change the way that children learn about and understand their bodies? Could a t-shirt be used as a platform for experimentation and, and inquiry? For example, imagine uh, children kind of having these kinds of questions. Does my heart beat faster when I'm running versus reading a book, and why? How does my breathing rate compare to my classmates, and why may this be? And how does food travel through my body? That's actually a complicated question. So how can we help support that through body viz? I won't go through these in detail, but the focus is on, on immediate visualization through body movement. So you'll see that in this video. Our first prototype sense and visualize the user's heart rate. Wearers can also view their digestive organs. Prototype 2 added airflow visualizations and flattened organs. We informally elicited feedback from our co-designers and at our local mini maker fair. Prototype 3 offers new and additional sensing and visualization. The heart and lungs visualize wearers' live heart rate and breathing rate. The snack time button initiates the digestive system visualization. A video illustrates food breakdown in the stomach. In this case, we use an apple slice. Sound effects indicate the end of digestion. <laughs> Magnetic removable organs allow children to explore different layers of the human body. Outlines and colored highlighters guide the reattachment of organs, which automatically begin working if placed in the proper position. We interviewed teachers and conducted single session field deployments with children to gain feedback on our designs. So that's body viz. And I'll close with um, I like this shirt, which is really kind of an exploratory, provocative design. We are really interested in these new kinds of social dynamics that are arising in the virtual world and how we might translate those things into the physical world. So for example, likes. Likes actually have an evocative aspect in the online world. They can make you feel good about things. So what would happen if we actually translated that into a physical art, everyday artifact like a t-shirt? And very quickly, if it's working, I will show you. And my partner here might be able to like my shirt. I don't know, you might have to press hard with your hand. Otherwise, I'll self-like, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of people want to do. I don't know, did it work? The, the law of demos. Anyway, up oh, there we go. I liked it, and it went from 143 to 144. <laughs> You can also go to ilikethisshirt.com literally right now and like my shirt, and you will see the, uh, the like number go up. Um, again, sort of a critical design, and yes, here was the demo. So in closing, I want to emphasize that e-textiles are not just about embedded electronics, but they're really new opportunities to augment and transform the human experience. Uh, new types of learning, new types of play and social interaction, and new types of performance. Another thing I want to point out is that to me, we're really at generation one of e-textiles. And so I hope you, you will uh, uh, join me in exploring this space. And there's a lot of online resources to help you in your journey. I also want to thank my graduate students who are integral to uh, designing these projects and working with me, and also our funding sources. Thank you. <laughs>